Good morning. We greet you in the majestic, mighty, uh, and marvelous name of our one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. It's certainly a wonderful blessing uh, to be in the house of the Lord on this morning, and there is no better day uh, to be in the house of the Lord than on today. The fact of the matter is, we discovered uh, that in this nation, that we've got two pandemics, COVID-19 and also racial injustice. But I want you to know that God has a vaccine for both. And so we're going to lift up his wonderful and mighty name in spirit and in truth. I want to read Psalm 8, which says, O, o Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine great enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy in their engine. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? That thou art mindful of him, the son of man, that thou visited him, for thou hast made him a little more than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Uh, verse 8 again says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. I give you our praise team and our minister of music to usher us into the presence of God.
we know that this pandemic has required us not only to socially distance physically, but it's also challenged us to support the work and the ministry of the gospel and the work of the church, even from a distance. So we want to commend you, just as the Apostle Paul did, commend you uh, that on the first day of the week or whenever you were there, uh, you've utilized our website to give online, uh, you've utilized our post office box to send in your tithes and your offerings, and for that, you ought to be committed, but I want you to understand something. It is not our com commendation that matters, because you need to understand that whenever you give to God, the windows of heaven will open, and God will rain down blessings on you. You are highly blessed today, because God has shown his favor on you. So thank you for your giving. As we continue in worship, let us hear some more from our music.
Oh Jesus, we certainly thank God for your wonderful uh, and for your blessed name. We know that there is no other name by which we can be saved, redeemed, or sustained. There's no name like the precious name of Jesus. As we come to share God's word on this morning, we certainly again thank you for joining with us. And now, God, we want to thank you for your Holy Spirit. We ask God that the Spirit will give us insight, give us instruction, even give us illumination as we claim, uh, as we preach your holy, mighty, and wonderful word. We pray, God, that your word would add substance to our life and sift out the things that don't need to be there. God, we thank you for the privilege of preaching. We thank you, God, for the power that comes along with the proclamation by your spirit. Now, God, grant that your word would do just as Isaiah said. Just as the rain and the snow descend from the heavens and water replenish and nourish, God, we pray that your word do that which it is said to do, to convert the unconverted and to encourage those who are already walking with the Lord. Father, we thank you. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if you'll draw me in the book of Exodus, the 40th chapter, the book of Exodus, uh, the 40th chapter, uh, I want to read verses 36 through 38. Uh, and it reads, And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all of their journeys. I want on this day to talk about God's guiding presence. God's guiding presence. All of us children uh, were very familiar with the childhood game and many of us even still play it. As adults, I played it with my grandchildren the other day called musical chairs. The chairs are set up uh, in a circle. The concept of the game is when the music starts, you move, and when the music stops, you stop. And what we notice in this text is that the children of Israel, listen, when the cloud rises, it's time to go. But when the cloud sets, it's time to stop. And that is an indication that the children of Israel, who had been supernaturally by the hand of God through Moses, brought uh, out of Egyptian bondage into the wilderness. The only way they could navigate that wilderness journey was by God's guiding presence. And I want you to understand something. Sometimes... We find ourselves in the wilderness of life. Sometimes we find ourselves in the wilderness even uh, as nations. But the fact of the matter is we need to understand that we must be guided by God's presence. Listen, uh, when God says move, we need to move. When God gives us a sign, a symbol that we need to stop, we need to stop. Because listen, wherever God guides, God will provide. And listen, I want you to understand something. When we find ourselves not where God wants us to be, we don't have the provision of God. But whenever we are moving in step with the providential hand of God, you will discover that God will make not only a way out of no way, but God will provide a water from a rock. God will provide manna even in the wilderness. Listen, I am not worried about an economic downturn because as long as I follow the guiding hand and presence of God, God has promised in his word that he will never leave nor forsake. He will sustain and he will provide. Listen, we need to know that God's presence did not follow Israel. Israel followed God's presence. Listen, when you go back to Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 17, you'll notice that first of all, we see uh, on a micro level what God does on a macro level for the nation of Israel in chapter 40. In, in chapter 33, God uh, brings Moses to him. And Moses says, God, how am I going to guide and lead these people? And God told Moses, and Moses, whenever I, I move by the cloud, Moses, that's when you move and the people need to move. And he said, listen, Moses, whenever the cloud Sets, that's when I want you to tell the people and you, y'all need to stop. Uh, and Moses, notice, Moses 
Bible said, listen, the presence of God will be indicative of the fact that we are being guided by the grace and the provision of God. Somebody ought to talk to me in this place. But then Moses said, God, how will I know what your presence is? And God said, listen, Moses, I want you to hide yourself in the cleft of a rock. Because listen, I, I want you to understand, I'm going to pass by. And you can't behold all of my presence, uh, all uh, in its significance, uh, without the blood covering you. So I'm going to protect you with the rock. And I'm going to pass by and give you a glimpse of my word. And so when God does this, he's letting Moses know what he wants him to tell the children of Israel. Listen to Moses uh, is on his deathbed uh, at the end of the book of Exodus. How it is that the children of Israel shall be guided. Listen, what we need to understand first of all, when we talk about God's guiding presence, is the gift of God's presence. So many of us take the presence of God for granted. So many of us, when we come into the hallowed presence of God, we don't do like Moses because God said, this is Moses. You in the presence of God, take off your shoes. It doesn't literally mean we need to take off our shoes, but symbolically, it means we need to humble ourselves when we come into the presence of God and understand that it's only by the blood of Christ that we can come into God's presence and not lose our life. Somebody ought to talk to me in this place. Because none of us can bring anything into the presence of God that will allow us to merit being in his presence. So by the grace of God, we are in the presence of God. God's presence, listen, is a gift. Listen, if God were to ask all of us, or God were to tell all of us, we had one wish, we can have anything that we want. On one hand, we can have everything but without God. But on the other hand, uh, we can have nothing but God. Well, what would you choose? If God said, listen, I, I, listen, I'm God, I can give you anything you want. You can have everything but not me. Or you can have me and nothing else. The fact of the matter is, if you're smart, and you love the Lord and know what God's guiding presence is. You'll say, God, I, I want you and you alone. I want you and nothing else. Because as long as you got God and God's presence, you already got everything. Somebody ought to talk to me in this place. And the thing of the matter is, we don't have to worry about stuff. We don't have to worry about things. We need to worry about having God. Because as long as we got God, we got the loving and the mighty hand of God that will provide and will take care of us. When Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, the devil came up to him and he told Jesus, listen, Jesus was weak uh, from being in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights and at his weakest fleshly moment. Uh, the devil said, listen, Jesus, I'll give you everything, but you can't have God. Jesus said, I, I can't take that deal. Because the fact of the matter is, as long as I got my father, I know I got everything that I need. And so you and I need to understand, as long as we got God, we got everything that we need. But the problem is, so many of us treat the presence of God like a business trip instead of a road trip. You know the difference between a business trip and a road trip is this, on a road trip, listen, you are excited to get to your destination. But along the way, you want to stop and enjoy the highway. You want to stop and enjoy, take some pictures. You want to enjoy the sights and the sounds of, along the journey. But many of us treat the presence of God like a business trip. We want to hurry up and get the project done. We want to get to our destination and we want to get back home. Listen, that's the way many of us treat coming into the presence of God on Sunday morning. Uh, we act like it's a business trip. We want to come, get the job done, and go home. But being God's presence is not a business trip. It ought to be like a road trip. You ought to enjoy being in the presence of God. You ought to behold the beauty of the Lord and the glory that fills his temple. And not only the gift of God's presence, secondly, you've got to see the weight of God's presence. Verse 34 says that when the cloud covered the tabernacle, when the tabernacle was God's visible or physical uh, place to represent his presence. And the Bible says that when the cloud covered the tabernacle, that the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So understand that God's presence covered over and God's presence was in. Uh, listen, you need to understand that God is not only watching over us, God 
is in us. His glory was over the place, but his glory was also in the place. I love Frank Heaven saying, Jesus be a fence all around me every day. But understand, he's not only a fence around you, he's also a fence on the inside of you. Listen, he told Moses, he said, Moses, when my cloud, when the cloud covers the temple and my glory fills the place, he said, Moses, you've been a great man. You've done everything I've asked you to do. You led them out uh, uh, of the wilderness and they're on the brink of coming to the promised land. And guess what, Moses? Even you are not good enough to enter into the tabernacle whenever my glory comes over the place. Because listen, unless there is some shedding or some innocent blood, Moses, not even you can come into the place where my glory dwells. And listen, I ain't trying to hurry to the end, but I'm so glad that the blood of Jesus was shed because I couldn't come into the presence of God had that blood not been shed. I would be barred from entering into the presence of God. Because of the blood of Jesus, I can come into his presence. But then he says in verse 36, and when the cloud lifted, the children of Israel went all over. Listen, the challenge of the lesson and the psalmonic uh, lesson today is to understand that when we're trying to be guided by God, we've got to be familiar with the presence and the voice of God. Because when God says to move, we need to move at the pace and in the direction that God tells us to move. But when God settles down and God tells us to stop, sometimes you got to replenish yourself. Even in ministry, Jesus knew when it was time to move, when it was time to stop, and when it was time to pray. God's guidance, my brothers and sisters, is what you and I often see. God's guidance will always provide. But listen, not only do we have the gift of God's presence and the way of God's presence, but we also see the value and the benefit of God's presence. Listen, here are the practical benefits. Listen, it wasn't just the fact. The greatest fact was that the cloud hung over the temple and the glory filled the place. When the cloud lifted, they moved. When the cloud settled, they stopped. But understand, when the cloud lifted, that was the cloud. And when the cloud settled, there was a pillar of fire at night. Here's the benefit. When the cloud lifted and they were in the wilderness, they had shade from a hot desert sun. When the cloud settled down at the end of the night and the fire came, the pillar of fire, uh, they had warmness in the coolness of the desert at night. Listen, God knew that the wilderness is hot during the day. So my presence is not only going to guide you spiritually, but it's going to protect you physically by giving you shade. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah in this place. But listen, God also knew that it gets cold in the desert at night. So I'm going to give you fire that while you're sleeping at night, I'm going to get happy in this place all by myself. Listen, God said, I'll give you shade when it's hot. I'll give you fire when it's cold. Listen, they stay work the school during the day and walk at night. And that means in the children of Israel saw this throughout Exodus 16 through Exodus 40. That God not only gave them food and water, but God also gave them peace and presence. Understand, God will give us our physical needs, but God, my brothers and sisters, will also meet our spiritual needs. Listen, all around us are what are called electric waves. And none of us can see the electronic waves uh, that are hovering in the air. As a matter of fact, the air that we breathe is thick with electronic waves. Uh, and because of these electronic waves, you and I have cell phone technology, we have high definition televisions, we have satellite radio. We cannot see uh, the thick electronic waves, my brothers and sisters, in the air. Listen, we need to understand that which is invisible is made visible by our radios, by our flat screen TVs, by our iPads and our laptops, because the fact of the matter is, that which is invisible needs something visible in order to manifest itself. And I want you to understand something, that the world and the earth and the universe are thick with the presence of God, but you and I cannot see the presence of God. But the Bible says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his grace and the glory of God. Nobody has seen God at any time. But I thank God, even though I can't see God. 
God's presence feels the thickness of the air. But Jesus has made God known, and I'm so grateful that Jesus was made known on the cross of Calvary. I'm grateful that Jesus was made known when they hung him high, stretched him wide, pierced his side, hung his head, then he died. I'm thankful that Jesus was made known when the stone was rolled away. He got up with all power on heaven and earth in his hands. And listen, I know we can't trace and we cannot track the movement and the presence of God. But God allows us to see his movement. God allows us to hear his voice through the word of God and through the Son of God. Listen, my brother and my sister, I want you to understand that God's glory wants to not only fill this place, but God's glory wants to enter your life. And the way God's glory can enter your life is for you to allow God to come into your heart, for God to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible declares that you shall be saved. Listen, it is our wonderful privilege and responsibility not only to usher you into the presence of God, but also to usher you into the kingdom of God. We want you to become a member of the kingdom of God today by confessing Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are so late, please give us a call, send us an email. So that we can pray with you, so that we can partner with you in your new walk with the Lord. God bless you.
Yeah. <laughs>